um, because I think that, can you talk about the connection between mold and hypothyroidism and kind of heavy metal toxicity? Like what, you know, how that can really kind of do a fast downward spiral of disease there. So what exactly, let's say, and I know for me personally, I had a stool sample done and they were looking at it and they said that one of my big thing is, is I had mold in my gut. So what exactly does that mean? And how do you fix it? Like, how how do you get it? And then how do you fix it? As we eat, you mentioned, you know, getting mold down in the gut. But what I feel the biggest thing, you know, first takeaway with mold or mold illness would be is having this terrain that has been interfered with. And that's where the heavy metals come in, really weakening our immune system. Uh, along comes the, you know, with par- uh, heavy metals would be parasites. Uh, so we'll get into that, but weakening the immune system. So then we can't naturally be able to deal with these allergens. But for some people like myself, we are more genetically susceptible to not being able to deal with mold and the mycotoxins that they produce. And that's roughly about a quarter of the population. And so, you know, there's a difference between having the allergy and a and true mold illness. But what I discovered is, is that my terrain just was not optimal. And then the final straw was living in a home that was extremely toxic uh, with mold. And it took me quite a you know, probably about four to five months to really put that piece together. Um, but I didn't have to do any special testing. Uh, we had water damage, you know, down in the, in the basement and wherever there's water, there's potential for mold. And it was really cold that winter. So the house wasn't breathing, which is another issue of why we're seeing so many buildings, uh, with, with mold issues, you know, in this country, but that's where the terrain uh, really comes into play, I believe, and why I say it's never just the mold. 